Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Kristen with Monarch Plans and today I'm doing a video on how I plan to use my Cultivate What Matters power sheets and my Moxie Life goal planner together in 2021. Um, these are both goal planners. They're both very focused on setting intentional goals and reflection and all of that stuff. If you haven't watched my videos previously, I reviewed the power sheets most recently because I received my 2021 power sheets a couple weeks ago. So I have a couple videos that go over the 2021 power sheets in more detail. So you can take a look at those. I'll link them um, up at the top of the screen. I have not received my 2021 Moxie Life Planner yet. So this is the 2020 version. I will be doing a full review and walkthrough of the 2021 Moxie Life Planner when I receive it. So that'll be some time hopefully in November but one thing to know is that the 2020 version is not super different from the 2021 there was a lot of just aesthetic changes that were made the content inside is very very similar so really for my purposes of this video it won't be a negative thing that I don't have the 2021 version yet so what I want to talk about a little bit more is how I'm planning to use these both because I think to most people having two different goal planners is maybe redundant um, doesn't make a lot of sense might be too much work but to me I honestly think that the pair of these two together is kind of the perfect system for me it is a little bit tedious having two Two different planners but I don't take these anywhere so these will just stay in my office on my desk I'll look at them every single week but they aren't going to be like going in my bag with me anywhere or anything like that so let me just get started I have used the power sheets for all of 2020 so far and I've used the moxie life since about June of this year I love both of them, but I love them for different reasons. So this whole thing of using both of them is so I can take the parts of both that I like and combine them so it becomes the ultimate goal setting system for me. So for my goal setting process for 2021, what I plan to do and actually what I've already started doing is I really enjoy the prep work in the Cultivate What Matters power sheets. It's in depth, it really gets me thinking. There's some writing involved and some really kind of deep introspection that is required with the pre-work for the power sheets. So what I'll do is I'll go through this whole beginning section uh, before 2021 starts. I'll probably do that in November and I've even already started brainstorming some goals. And I will essentially just go through and do all of the work in here about me, do my cultivated life evaluation, do all of the kind of prompts and everything like that. I find that this gets me really in the mindset of goal setting and really helps me kind of hone in on what different things I would like to focus on. I also really appreciate that they include pages in the front that are for brainstorming. And I actually have a sticky note here that has some of my goals already brainstormed for 2021. So I love this page where it's like the first page in the book and you're already brainstorming goals. It's really nice to be able to just get things down on paper. And this is a little pen test that I did for one of my videos earlier. So don't mind that. Um, so I'm really excited to dig into the power sheets. That is where I'm going to start my goal setting process for 2021. So I will dig into the power sheets a little bit, finish some of those prompts in the beginning part of the book. And then what I will do is I will move into my Moxie Life Planner. The Moxie Life also has some prep work and goal setting. So you can see here, um, in the beginning, there's a getting started page. So you start with a compass assessment and that includes these pages here where you'll go through and do the assessment for each of the categories, total up your scores and you'll fill out your life compass. And this is your starting point for your goals in the Moxie Life. You can see that in the Moxie Life, you just dive right into your life compass assessment. There's not really a lot of work that goes into kind of journaling or anything like that. It's just diving straight into the compass. I think that that's great. Um, that process also can work for a lot of people, but I'm a person who I'd rather kind of get into the mindset prior to completing my life compass. And so once you have your score, you can go in and start setting some intentions, setting some goals. You have your word for 2020 or in our case, 2021. And then it goes through and has a little bit more detail. I know there might be a couple additional pages in 2021 that describe things a little bit um, more in terms of breaking down goals and everything. 
and then you're into your annual goals. So the prep work is very short in the Moxie Life, which like I mentioned, I think is good for some people, but I want to take my time, especially because I have a lot of things I'm trying to accomplish in 2021 and I don't wanna rush it at all. So the thing that I'll do though, that really helps when you're combining these two processes is the Life Compass has very similar categories to the Cultivated Life um, Evaluation. So you can see here for power sheets, there are eight different categories. For Moxie Life, there are also eight different categories, but there are a couple big differences. The first one is that power sheets has friends, family, and spouse or focal relationship. In the Moxie Life, it's all family and relationships. Other than that, all of the categories are the same. There's health, finances, spiritual and personal growth, recreation and work. And those are mirrored over here in fun and recreation, work, health and fitness, spiritual and personal growth, financial. The two that are different in the Moxie Life versus the Power Sheets are the physical environment and the personal. And those two I think are good categories. I actually think I am going to change my friends um, category into physical environment because quite honestly, I think that I have a good handle on my friendships. I don't really feel like I need to work on those, but I do feel like for 2021, I do want to focus on physical environment. So one thing that I'll note is that these goal systems need to work for you. So if you need to change something in here, and I know some people are like, oh my God, don't change anything. But quite honestly, I, I need to. I want to focus on home and physical environment and I don't need to focus on friends. Why should I have a category for friends if I don't feel like I need to work on that? So I'm going to be changing this to physical environment. In terms of personal, I've always kind of struggled with this personal category in the life compass because it feels so general and I know it can get specific and there's different examples, but it doesn't bother me that I don't have a personal category in my power sheet. So I'm not going to change the power sheets to include like a personal category or anything like that. So the nice thing is, is that the life compass uh, provides a score out of 10 for each of these categories and the Cultivated Life Evaluation also have, has you rank out of 10. So what I would like to do is I'm going to take the Life Compass Assessment and I'm going to do it like I'm supposed to and I'm going to see what my scores are and everything like that. And then I will copy those scores into my Cultivated Life Evaluation. So there's a very calculated way that I'm going to be getting these scores and a calculated way that I can reassess each quarter when I go through and do this again. Um, so that is one thing that I'm going to do is I will use the life compass assessment to give me the scores, not only for my compass, but also for my power sheets. So once I do that, I will continue through the prep work in the power sheets. And from there, I narrow down some goals. So as you saw in the Moxie life, you go very quickly from um the assessment into your intentions and then really quickly into setting your annual goals so the power sheets just allows me to kind of slow down a little bit and really again maintain some intentionality behind setting my goals so when i finally get to the point where it's time to draft my yearly goals i will make sure that my goals in my moxie life planner and the goals in my power sheets match one thing that I appreciate about the Moxie Life, but I also find a little bit frustrating is that there are these set categories that you essentially have to fit your goals into, which I've been able to in the past. Um, so that's fine, but the power sheets are a lot more open-ended. Like you don't need to have just those set eight categories. You can put goals in here from any of the eight categories or anything else so it doesn't even need to fit into any of these if you don't want this is just to get you thinking so I really appreciate how open-ended this is but I also appreciate that the moxie life gives you kind of a good framework for different areas to set your goals so all that being said I will be trying to fit the goals that I set in my cultivate what matters power sheets 
into the annual goals in my moxie life. I will fill out these sheets, but I think I will be focusing more of my annual goal setting in the power sheets planner just because of the way it's set up. That's where my prep work is going to be. I feel like that's kind of the centralized place where I will be narrowing down my goals. So the power sheets are where my actual goals will be sitting. From there in the moxie life, you pretty much just get into the months. So you just start going, sorry, I have some measurements here so I could make some stickers for myself. But you just get into your monthly goals and then the weekly actions, notes and reflections, everything like that. So that's where the months start. In the power sheets, once you draft your goals, you move into your goals in this one master list, which is, as I mentioned, where I will be having my goals instead of in the moxie life. You have your word of the year, and then it's time to get into the very specific action plans for your goals. I really, really appreciate these pages and the power sheets because they help you break down your goals. So instead of just hopping right into the month, this helps me really narrow down what I need to do each quarter. So I will complete each of these pages for all of my goals. And once I'm done with that, there's eight of them. Then there's a quarter or a yearly overview, which I'll fill this out. This isn't the most important page for me, but it really is helpful if you're wanting to see everything on one page. And then it's time to get into the months. So in January, you have your preparation pages, you have your monthly spread, and then this is just for January, tells you how to make attending list, but you brainstorm and then you have your attending list. I plan to fill out this front page because it really just helps me get things down on paper and clear out my mind. And then let me skip the monthly page. I will be then using the power sheets to brainstorm my goals for the month. So what I like to do is I like to um, most of the time is write down my different goal categories so that can be um, essentially these different categories. So like personal, fun, recreation, work and learning, family and relationships. I write down the general category that my goals fall into. And then if I have any ideas for each monthly, weekly or daily, I'll put them in. So then once I've brainstormed and I have all my ideas down, then I can move them into my tending list. So what I'll be doing is I'll create my tending list. The nice thing about a tending list is it includes all of your stuff on one page. I love having something at a glance where I can see what I need to do for the month, what I need to do each week, what I need to do each day, all on one page. The Moxie Life doesn't necessarily have that because when you get into the month, you set your monthly goals and you could detail on here what needs to happen each week, but that's not necessarily how I use the monthly goals page. I like to write out like my actual monthly, essentially my monthly ideas. And then as you get into the weeks, that's where you write your weekly ideas. And then when you get into the actual weekly spread, that's where your dailies come in. So you have your daily habits down here. So there's multiple different spreads that you look at to see your different monthly, weekly, and daily action items. Instead, the tending list, you have this one page that has all of your stuff on it. I really, really appreciate that. So once I have my monthly action items and my monthly goals, as I would say, I will move those monthly action items into the monthly section of my Moxie life. And it's not going to be super detailed. It's essentially in the power sheets. You only have one line for that. So that is how I will be copying them over is just whatever I wrote in my power sheets, I'll put in my monthly goals. If I have any more detail I want to add, that's this is where I'll do it. There are multiple lines, so I can always put notes or any additional ideas I have in here. One thing I will note is for like the personal category that doesn't have a corresponding spot in my power sheets, I'll still create a personal goal if I want to. That's totally fine. I don't have an issue with that, but I'm mainly focusing on these other categories that will have corresponding categories in my power sheets. So once I have the monthly goals and everything copied over and action items copied over, I'll move in. I can use this page for any reflections or notes or anything like that, but I don't really have a use for this at this point. I'll move into my weekly actions. So that includes 
any of these that I need to focus on. This is a place where I can put my goals and my weekly actions, but also just other big things that might get in the way of my goals for the week. So this is a good place to pre-plan. And then this is the, the weekly spread. I'm not planning at this point to use my Moxie Life as my main planner. So this spread is really, really open for me. I can use it for whatever I want. I got a vertical layout for 2021, so it's going to look very similar. But this can be really for anything I need it to be for. If I want to list out each day what my day is going to look like in terms of like my goals, how I'm going to work towards my goals every day, whatever it needs to be, this is where I can do it. I kind of enjoy having like an empty space or an empty spread so I can do that if I want to but I also don't feel obligated to use it. The one thing that is very helpful is the habit trackers down here so that is where you can focus on your daily habits and so you see in the power sheets your daily action items and habits are here and you can check them off but you can also use the corresponding habit tracker. I feel like I'll be using the habit trackers in here on more of a daily basis and then probably once a week I'll transfer my progress from my habit trackers and my moxie life into my tending list. So I don't check in with my tending list every single day or I haven't in the past and I'm not really planning to in the upcoming year. So I'll go through the week, I'll finish out the week, and then it's time for a notes and reflections and a weekly actions for the upcoming week. I plan to do my notes and reflections. There are definitely some great reflection questions to ask in terms of like, how was this past week? What worked? What didn't? What can I change or improve? All of that stuff. There are a ton of really helpful um, prompts and reflection questions that you can ask yourself when you're doing your weekly reflection. So I will be using this as an end of the week um, kind of journaling and check up on how I did for the prior week. And then I can use this information to then go through and do more weekly actions. Again, referencing my tending list, making sure I'm keeping my weekly action items in mind, keeping my monthly action items in mind in case there are specific tasks that I need to do relating to some of my action items. And then also, again, noting anything that might possibly get in the way of my goals for that week. So that's essentially what the month will look like. It continues, there's multiple spreads in here, multiple reflections, multiple weekly actions. So that's how my month will look. The other thing to note is that I do keep track of some of my habits in my actual weekly planner that I use, but I'm not going to be keeping track of, I think in the new 2021 planner, there's seven different habits. I don't have space in the sidebar of my weekly planner to keep track of seven different habits at this point. So I'll keep track of a few that maybe are the most important to me, but my main habit tracker will be in my Moxie life. The next thing I'll note is that at the end of every month, there's a monthly reflections page. So I will go through and I'll fill out the monthly reflections in my Moxie life because these are actual like written prompts that I really, really enjoy filling out. And then in my power sheets at the end of every month, there is this month in review. It's very similar. I feel like there's probably the same questions for the most part. So like biggest wins, um, things that are currently working, not working, what I learned. These are a little bit different in terms of like, what are my favorite memories? What I read or listened to, good things, you know, stuff like that. They're a little bit different. There's some overlap, which is fine but I don't have any hesitation filling out both. And if there's a point where I'm like, hmm, this is really tedious, I'll stop one or the other. At this point, I would like to do both just because I enjoy looking back on these things. And so that's just something that I'm okay with. When you get to the end of a quarter, you have another quarterly compass in your moxie life. And then you also have, um, let's see, beginning of April, you have a goal refresh. So part of the goal refresh is you do the same evaluation out of 10 in your power sheets, and then you do a little bit of refreshing in terms of like maybe changing some goals, maybe kind of changing your focus for the upcoming quarter, um, and then um, just kind of looking back to see if there's anything that maybe you're stuck on, anything that needs some extra work, anything like that. And then you'll be able to refine your goals a little bit further, the ones that you made earlier this year, create some new little action steps for the quarter, and then you are good to go to your April um, preparations for your tending list. 
In the Moxie life, you have your quarterly compass that you fill out. You fill out the quarterly compass by rating your satisfaction in each of the life areas from one to 10. So at the quarter, it's very similar doing the um, cultivated life assessment where you're essentially writing down your satisfaction in each area, the same thing here. So at this point, at the quarter, I'll be able to really easily just fill out both of them for the categories. Again, the only one being different is this personal category. And then here, the only one that would be different from the Moxie Life is the family category. The family and relationships here combines both the spouse focal relationship and family for me. So I'll work out how to rank those, but I am fine with that difference as well. Um, and then personal, I'll just look at the personal just in the moxie life and gauge how that's going so you can see your progress over here the one thing that's really nice is that there isn't like a comparison tool between looking at your quarter and looking at your original so i really do appreciate that there's two on the same page so you can see if there's been any growth or if things have declined over the quarter there's also a couple different prompts here to get you to think a little bit more about how the last quarter went and then from there you get into the next month. So the quarterly system in the Moxie Life is pretty, pretty quick and focused versus you have a little bit more space and room to look through things and really reassess things in the power sheets. So the other thing I really appreciate about the power sheets is there's the year in review at the very back of the planner, which I will be using and filling out each month. So that is also one thing that I'll be using my power sheets for that I will not be using my Moxie Life for. Um, so that is just one other thing to keep in mind. That is essentially an overview of how I will be using those. I know that might be a little bit confusing. There's a lot of back and forth between the two, but essentially what I want people to keep in mind is that I love in the power sheets, the specificity of the prep work, both at the very beginning of the year and each quarter. So the prep work and the preparation for setting goals in the power sheets is what I really appreciate about the power sheets. The tending list itself is very broad and general for me. It's essentially just a checklist and I need a little bit more direction, which is where the moxie life comes in. So on the other hand, the moxie life, the prep work and the quarterly assessments are pretty high level. And you can get, you know, more detailed and everything. And it really just depends on how you assess yourself. But in the actual planner itself, there's only a couple pages in the beginning and a one page for the quarterly assessment. What I appreciate about the Moxie Life though, is that it kind of picks up on all the areas that the power sheets lacks in my opinion. So where there's the monthly goal setting and the weekly action items and the daily habit trackers and the notes and reflections each week, that's where the Moxie Life is awesome for me. So I can use my Power Sheets tending list to outline and create my weekly action items and my monthly action items and my daily habits, but I will use the Moxie Life to really do a deep dive into those every single week. The Moxie Life keeps me very, very focused on my goals every single week. So with the power sheets, I've seen a lot of people say they set their power sheets, tending list intentions, and then they forget to look at it until the next month. Super easy to do. Quite honestly, the power sheets, you need to schedule time in your week to look at your power sheets and remind yourself what you're supposed to be doing. With the Moxie Life, you're looking at this every single week and probably more often than that um, because I will be using the daily habit trackers and everything like that and doing uh, more reflections and everything, but it makes it so you're constantly thinking about your goals. So I think that honestly, the both of these together is the perfect system for me. There's the detailed goals and the detailed quarterly uh, refreshes in here, the detailed weekly and monthly and daily trackers in here. And they both flow, as you saw, the categories in them are so similar and you can always change the categories if you would like to. It's a little bit harder to change the categories in the Moxie Life, I will say, just because the compass assessment at the beginning has the assessment based on these different categories. So if you are planning to change any categories, I would change them in the Power Sheets instead of in the Moxie Life. 
that's just one thing to know. Um, you can always make it work however you would like to, but that is one thing that I do see as an issue with needing to change anything in Moxie Life. I know that people might have questions or comments or anything about this system. Um, so if you do, you can feel free to leave a comment below. If it's something a little bit more personal or you just don't feel comfortable leaving a comment, I always have my email address in my description box. Or you can also find me on Instagram at monarch underscore plans. The other thing I will say is I really am wanting to be intentional with showing you guys how I set my goals for this upcoming year. I have some big goals. I always am a huge goal setter. I create big, big, big goals at the beginning of the year. And a lot of times I make really good progress on them. And there's some goals that I just don't make progress on. And so I am always super excited to set my goals. And as you saw, I've already started. It's not even November yet. And I am well on my way to creating my goals and my power sheets. So I'll try and take you guys along. I'll be filming a video that's talking about some of my brainstorm goals for the upcoming year. I'll show you some of my um, power sheets prep work, the stuff that isn't private because I know there might be some things in here that I end up being private and then I'll show you how I use these together um, at some point. The video that I will be filming and coming out with next week is how I will be incorporating or how you can incorporate your goals into your weekly planner. So that's where it can get really really redundant where you have your goal planner and in my case my goal planners and then my weekly planner. So I will be going through that, um, how I'm planning to do it, ideas for what you can do. And if you're not using two, then I can discuss different ways to put your tending list in your planner, put your monthly and weekly and daily action items in your planner. So I will be coming out with that video next week. So keep an eye out for that if you are interested. Um, I will be looking at the Plum Paper. I'll look at the Erin Condren. I'll look at the Passion Planner. Just a couple different planner types so you can kind of see different ideas because all three of them have different setups that allow you to include the information from your goal planners if you would like to. So again, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know. I would love to talk to you guys about this. If you guys have any other ideas or things that you're doing, I would love to hear about those as well because honestly, I can always find ways to improve my goal setting system. That's just one thing is every single year I feel like my system gets more and more and more refined. So if you have any special ideas that you're doing this upcoming year, I would love to hear them. But again, th thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you later. Bye.